Buy low, sell high, that's my motto. I may just quit my job at the power plant and become a full-time stock market guy. Hi again, everyone. I hope you're all having a great day. So during Wednesday's trade, our big investment hopeful Vinco Ventures, ticker symbol BBRG, or aptly named BBIG, got absolutely poleaxed on the news that it was selling 117 million fresh shares to institutions. The stock has been on a slow slide in recent days as it nears the important October 14 meeting. Obviously, the fear around the company selling shares to raise equity has got shareholders spooked over the fears of dilution. But to be honest, in the case of Vinco Ventures, this equity raising is probably a positive move. So in this video, we are going to dive into this equity raising to get an understanding of why it has been a bit of a market overreaction to be selling off the stock at the moment, as well as have a look at what this all means for the stock in terms of the potential new acquisition in AdRiser, as well as look at the stock on a technical basis. And I also will provide a bit of an update on the state of the short squeeze. So there is a fair bit to cover, so let's get straight into it. So if you have been following my updates on BBIG, you would know that I have made an attempt to sift through some of the more complex warrant deals they have in place, particularly concerning those that are set to execute on October 14. We actually calculated that Vinco Ventures stock was going to have a net asset book value of $2.16 per share, rising from the negative 80 cents per share it currently is worth following the execution of the warrants at the October 14 meeting. And what happened yesterday was a similar sort of event, that being Vinco Ventures executed on warrants to raise cash for the company. Obviously, with the execution of these warrants now, this will change the value of the shares when the big equity raise occurs on the 14th of October, but that is kind of the subject for another day. For now, we need to look at a few key questions, including why were these warrants executed? How much cash is the company raising? Was this equity raise good for the company? And what does it mean for the share value longer term? Well, to start with the first question, we need to understand that BBRG is a complex network of businesses, most of which are aiming to be unique players in developing future industries. As such, the futuristic nature of the businesses they operate mean that their company does not generate much in the way of revenue at the moment. So to make ends meet, a company like this does need to undertake periodic revenue raisings to cover the costs of operations until they become profitable. Furthermore, there is an item of interest when you dig into the SEC filing for this equity raising, information that for all intents and purposes has not really been publicized strongly. That being Vinco Ventures are seeking to acquire yet another company, that being AdRiser, for $100 million. So part of this capital raising could be to fund the future acquisition of AdRiser. I need to dig a bit deeper into the nature of AdRiser, but they are an AI-driven advertising platform that allows marketers to optimize their ROI and watch the associated analytics. I suppose a little bit like one of my old favorite Smarin software, but more research is needed in this space. So aside from potentially funding ongoing operations, this money could be utilized to fund another tech-related business acquisition. Now, to answer the second question of how much cash the business is going to receive, we need to again look into the S1 form the company filed to get an understanding of the warrants that were being executed. In total, there were 117,574,040 new shares sold at a higher than market price of $6.45. Gotta remember, when executing warrants, generally there is a bit of a premium built into the share price. This equity raise is going to give the company a total of $758,353,588. Cash, less a total registration fee of $70,299, which is basically the equivalent of less than half of a cent per share. So it's quite a minuscule fee. The next question we have is whether this equity raise is good for the company. This is a little less clear. Obviously, as we have covered before, BBIG is a business that doesn't have enough revenue to cover its operating costs currently. So there is a likelihood that some of the money raised is going to go towards that ongoing expense. In saying that, however, this is a significant equity raise and could be used for some big move in the future, which is looking increasingly like being this acquisition. The other factor we have to consider is this could also be a bit of a contingency from the company in the event that Proposal 4 does not get the votes it requires at next week's shareholders meeting, in which case the business has to settle those transactions with cash. Otherwise, the series of mergers and acquisitions that they have lined up will not occur. And that's also written in the proposal that we went through in the other video. Shareholders can vote no, but probably not in this case. Finally, in terms of looking at shareholder value, in short, this is obviously good for the underlying stock value in the short run, just accounting for the cash injection alone, it improves the underlying tangible book value significantly, bringing it up to $3.42 per share, which is a $4.22 jump 
from where this figure was based on the company's last set of financial statements, that being worth negative 80 cents per share. So while the number of shares outstanding has drastically increased, there has not been any dilution effect in terms of shareholder value. It actually drastically increases the value of the company in the short run. What it means for the company in terms of the values after next week's shareholder meeting is another matter, one that I will endeavour to look into again soon, perhaps after the meeting once the outcome of the vote for Proposal 4 has been finalised. Also, looking at these figures does not take into effect the value of the assets of AdRiser that Vinco Ventures may acquire from the transaction, and nor does it account for any goodwill that may be built into the accounting transaction, aka the premium paid for the acquisition. The other item that is worth querying is when will these shares become available for trading and will they be eligible for the Cryptide stock dividend if they are active price next Thursday? My reading of the Cryptide timeline suggests that they won't have any voting power, but whether or not they will receive Cryptide stock is not totally clear. Given the proximity of the transactions, I would assume no, as this will seriously dilute the Cryptide assets being floated, but really it's not clear to me at this stage. So in light of this information, I think it was actually quite surprising how the stock reacted yesterday. Markets behave irrationally all the time, but usually correct themselves. However, yesterday when the stock dropped on this news, I was very surprised it did not recover more as the day went on and the information behind this equity raise came to light. Obviously, there is a lot of short interest in the stock and I'm sure a lot of short positions were trying to take this opportunity to cover. Um, looking at the RSI, it basically stayed in oversold territory for the entire session. So it was clearly a very irrational move from the stock. In terms of the broader short squeeze effort for the stock, if you are interested in that particular play, we can see that our legacy short positions represented by the red square, which represent all of the potential firepower of the short squeeze, took a bit of a haircut from Wednesday's trading action. As such, leaving our red box of distressed short positions to look a little bit more like this. So basically all of the pre-September shorts are still under distress, but most of the recent ones caught up in the stock rally have been let loose. However, in short, the short squeeze is still intact. In terms of how the short starter for the stock has changed, it will likely take a little while for a few of the settings to update to include the new shares in the float when calculating the short interest. Clearly, all key short metrics have gone down, including unfortunately the Fintel ranking, which has slid dramatically. Just for some perspective, however, if the new shares were included in the float today, that would bring the market cap for Vinco Ventures up to $993 million. And in terms of how the new shares would affect the short interest, since warrants are generally executed and held by institutions and often have a lockup period incorporated in them. So while they will dilute the overall percentage of positions shorted, when they are included in the float, they won't actually change the pressure on shorts to cover, as there is only the same number of shares being traded. That is unless, of course, some of the insiders or institutions choose to dump shares, which would require market notification. Also, a situation like this can actually also lead to a bit of a shorts trap, which could tempt short traders to take out more short positions than what are actually being traded publicly. It does happen now and then. If you are someone that is in trend analysis, there is a bit of a wedge pattern for me when you track the series of lower highs and lower lows over the last fortnight, signaling a potential breakout is looking likely. Clearly with October 14 approaching, there is a definitive catalyst for the said breakout. Things are definitely still happening with this stock. This is definitely one of those stocks that you can't blink, otherwise you miss what will happen. Such is the nature of rapid change around the company. On to final thoughts. Now, admittedly, I need to dig a little bit deeper to understand what all of this is going to mean for the underlying share value following October 14. My gut tells me that it will actually be a further improvement, but I do need to do a bit more research into this. The other point I would like to research further is, will these shares be eligible for the Cryptide stock dividend? Because if so, this will dilute the value of that dividend. The limited information that Vinco Ventures has released about this is that it is that the Cryptide dividend is for eligible shareholders on record on the 15th of October, which could make these shares eligible if they are registered before then. Whether they are or not is another matter. The other area acquiring further research is what role AdRiser will play in the emerging conglomerate of companies that is Vinco Ventures? And will it be an entity that is self-sustaining or can at least generate enough synergies to be not a further financial burden on the company? 
and how much goodwill is being paid for it if and when the deal is finalized. So while yesterday's equity raising caught a lot of punters off guard, in true Vinco Ventures nature, it actually represents further expansion of the company and at least for the meantime, we'll flip the underlying net asset value of the stock in a positive way, which are obviously all good things. Whatever you think of the company, they definitely know how to make a splash and keep things interesting. Yesterday's irrational market move actually presents a strong value proposition for buying the stock in my eyes. Not that this is financial advice. And for now, while the short squeeze play has been further relegated to the side, it's still very much alive. Vinco Ventures, blink and you'll miss it. Anyway, that's about it for this one. What do you guys think about Vinco Ventures' latest moves to acquire yet another company? Do you know much about AdRiser? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, everyone, may the markets trade in your favor. Cheers. Thank you.